There's something that often gets overlooked in the whole debate regarding whether or not you have to be baptized to be saved, and it's in regards to the Philippian jailer. The Philippian jailer risked his life to be baptized. Did you know that? Think about that. For those of you out there who don't believe baptism relates to salvation, I want to ask you this. When you present the gospel to somebody, do you do it in such a way that it elicits this sort of response as the Philippian jailer, where you're ready to risk your life just to be baptized? Does it, does it elicit that sort of response? Or are you preaching, hey, you know, don't worry about it, we'll just do it some other day? Um, it's just an outward expression of an inward faith anyways. You're already saved. That's what's important. You've already been baptized by the Spirit. Um, yeah, we'll get baptized when we can. You see, that's not what happened with the Philippian jailer. A lot of people are familiar with the story where, remember, Paul and Silas were locked up, imprisoned, and there was an earthquake, and their chains were loosed. And what happened was the jailer thought that they had escaped, so he was going to fall on his sword. And then Paul stopped him, and he asked, what shall I do to be saved? And a lot of people like to quote this part right here. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they typically stop there. But it doesn't end there. And what goes on is very telling of what exactly Paul preached, because it says that he went on to speak the word of the Lord, right? He went on to continue to preach to him. It says, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, in the middle of the night, guys. This was after midnight, and washed their stripes. So the jailer took them in the middle of the night, Outside of the prison, he took them to go wash their stripes. And it says, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now, it's easy to just look at this, and you can read over this multiple times and not really understand the implications of what's going on here. See, he was a Philippian jailer, and he was in charge of these prisoners. And the reason he was going to fall on his sword and kill himself, like it says up here, is because the penalty for letting prisoners escape back then, was often execution. It was punishable by death. That's why he was going to fall on his sword. He thought they had escaped, and he was doomed anyways, and he was going to be executed, and maybe he didn't want to face the public shame and thought it would be better just to end his life. And we see that this was common back then. If we look back at Acts 12, sort of a similar situation, Peter was locked up, and there was an angel that came and helped him get out of there, and... Herod, when he, when he couldn't find them, what he did was he had the guards who were in charge of watching over Peter, he had them executed. He had them put to death. So this would have been a fearful thing to lose a prisoner. And we see in Acts 27, 42, when Paul's boat, it got shipwrecked. And the, what they were going to do, the soldiers, they were just going to kill all the prisoners. Well, this is very telling because, again, losing prisoners was punishable sometimes by death. So they were just planning on killing them all so they wouldn't escape, and therefore they wouldn't have to face execution. So if we look at this story, okay, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, you and your household. And what happened was Paul continued to speak the word of the Lord to him, and it elicited this response, hey, I need to go get baptized. Right then, it was the middle of the night, it was after midnight, and he needed to go get baptized. And think about it. He was a, a jailer. If he would have taken these prisoners outside of the prison, where they could have escaped for all he knew, and took them down to the, to the river, wherever it was, and washed them, and, and got baptized, Paul would have preached some sort of urgency to this. I mean, think about it. If somebody would have spotted them and saw what the jailer was doing, taking these prisoners outside where they could have escaped, or, you know, who, who knows what, what people would have thought. He could have lost his job, or he could have been killed. He could have been, especially if they escaped, he could have been executed. So what would have made the Philippian jailer take baptism so seriously, especially, again, it's in the middle of the night. I mean, think about it. To the point where he would risk his life. Could you just imagine in modern day, I mean, really any country, could you imagine this happening, this playing out, in any country today, where there's a prison guard and one of the prisoners ends up telling him how to be saved, he preaches the gospel, and so what the what the guard does is he sneaks him out of the jail, takes him out of the jail, 
down to maybe a local river or something and has him baptize him with another prisoner. I mean, think about that. Think about that. I mean, could you even fathom something like that? Now, let's take an extreme example and say if that guard was to be executed, if he lost one of those prisoners, you could see the stakes were extremely high. And we see it was in the middle of the night. So what? why was there such an urgency? Why was there this notion that, hey, we have to do it now? No, regardless of, of if I'm going to lose my job, regardless of if I'm going to be killed for this, this has to be done right now. Well, the only way this makes any sense is if you take all the scriptures together that talk about baptism. Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. That was taken literally. If we take uh, you know, Acts 2.38, we take these other verses, uh, 1 Peter 3.21, baptism now saves you. Uh, John 3, where Jesus said, you have to be born of water and of spirit to enter the kingdom of God. So think about it. These verses seem to be taken quite literally. I mean, there was this sense of urgency to the point where you felt that you had to be baptized, even if it meant you were going to be seen by somebody and be killed for it. Now, let's go ahead and imagine that today playing out. Let's just be honest. For those of you that believe baptism doesn't save, let's be honest. If you had somebody in your congregation, in your church, or or wherever, in your fellowship, and there was a very real risk of them being killed that night, let's say it's three o'clock in the morning and somebody gets saved at your house. And let's say if you go out, there's a very real chance of somebody getting killed, very possible chance. Would you, would you just put it off and say, okay, don't worry about it. You know what? We'll just do it today or the next day or, or sometime when it's safer, you know? I mean, we don't have to risk your life for this. Th- this isn't worth that. I mean, after all, it's just an outward expression of an inward faith, right? You see, is the gospel that you're preaching eliciting this sort of response from people where they want to get baptized in the middle of the night and at the risk of their own lives? Or is it eliciting the opposite response of, well, we can just put it off. We can do it at the quarterly baptism. We can just do it whenever, or just not at all. What type of gospel are you preaching? Is it, is it the type of gospel that Paul preached here, where it elicited this sort of urgency that, no, I need to do this, and I need to do it now. I, I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't wait till the next day. I can't wait till this weekend or the quarterly baptism or whenever. I have to do it now. And, and you got to think, this would have been running through his head. What if I get caught? What if somebody sees me taking these prisoners out of the jail? What are they going to think? What are they going to do to me? This had to have been running through his mind, but yet he still did it. Just try to think about the implications of that. Could you see that today? If there was, again, if there was a real possibility that doing that would kill somebody, would you take that person out to be baptized, knowing that that could have them killed? And you may say, well, yeah, because, uh, you know, like Jesus said, whoever denies me in front of men, uh, he will deny in front of the Father. Well, if you think about it, it was in the middle of the night. He didn't invite, you know, all sorts of, of friends and family. Yes, he had his immediate family there. He had his household, those who were in his household, but it wasn't a big event like today where you invite everybody to the church and that sort of thing. So it wouldn't have been this sort of public uh, declaration, and, and that's the main purpose, and it was just for the purpose of confessing before men. No, there was a sense of urgency that he needed to do it right then and, again, in the middle of the night. So is this the sort of gospel that you preach? Does it create this in people? And you have to ask yourself, if it doesn't, why not? Well, let me just submit to you that the reason is, is because you're not preaching the same gospel that the apostles and Jesus preached. Baptism is included in part of the gospel. It is, it is part of the gospel. It's integral to the gospel. It's part of the Great Commission. He said, go into all the world, preaching the gospel, baptizing them, and teaching them to observe all that he commanded. It's all connected. It's all tied in together. And that's why you see these extreme responses, these immediate responses. There was absolutely no waiting. It was, you had to do it right then. And the eunuch, remember the eunuch, after Philip preached to him, he said, look, there's water. What forbids me from being baptized? And if you look at the conversion of Paul, Ananias told him, why do you wait? Why do you tarry? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. 
So can you say that? Can you say these verses to people? Can you say, hey, why are you waiting? You know, you're waiting to get baptized till tomorrow. Why not do it tonight in the middle of the night? Why do you wait? Why don't you get baptized, washing away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord? Can you say that to people? Is that even in your terminology? Can you, can you look at somebody and say, hey, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who doesn't believe will be condemned? Can you say these sorts of things to people? If not, again, I submit to you that it's because you have an incomplete gospel message. Going back to the Exodus, if you just look back to the Exodus, when they got saved, they had to put the blood over the doorpost, but that was only one part of their initial salvation. They also had Egypt coming after them. Remember, they changed their minds, and they tried to come after them, and then they had to walk through the Red Sea. So they were saved in a sense— after putting the blood of the lamb over the doorpost, but then they weren't saved in another sense. They still had to be saved again by walking through the Red Sea, and they did this by faith. Okay, you have to believe and repent first, but that's the salvation picture for today. Yes, you have to believe. Yes, you have to repent, but you also have to be born of water, like it says in John 3. You have to be born of, of spirit and of water to enter the kingdom of God. Guys, just go back to the Exodus, just look at that. That's a picture that's used over and over again, uh, time and time again throughout the New Testament as a picture of our salvation today. So just ponder on this. Ponder on this tonight. Why was there such an urgency? W- would you risk your life just to be water baptized? I mean, if, if you really don't think it's salvific, if, it's you, if you really don't think it's that big of a deal, if you think it's just a symbol or just an outward showing of an inward faith that's already taken place, then would you do this? Would you risk your life to be baptized right then? You couldn't wait at all. If not, doesn't that make you think? Doesn't that make you question if you have the complete picture, if you have the complete gospel? Think about it, guys. That's all I got for today. God bless.